it is those who have the least mm. who deserve the most. The most, yeah. So you have to find the ones who can afford mm. and cover and provide through taxes, mm. cover for all of them. Mm. Give everyone who MHIF mm. who is poor. Mm. Start there. Now I start to talk about mm. it. And mm. I start to talk about mm. pro poor mm. UHC. I start mm. to talk about people must have a right mm. to get their health, mm. their mm. basic health taken mm. care of. Mm. Okay? If you mm. want cosmetic surgery, mm. please go do it. Mm. But if you have pneumonia mm. or you are pregnant and you need to be taken care of, mm. that's mm. everyone's mm. business. Go. Yeah. When I start to talk about this, mm. I start to tweet about mm. it, start to position AMREF mm. as a pro poor organization, mm. pro justice mm. organization. Mm. At the same time, the world is creating, is moving away from donor mm -hmm. to universal health coverage. Mm. Mm. And they have now now created this platform, global platform, mm. that's called UHE 2030, mm. saying that the world must achieve universal health coverage by 2030 mm. Mm. and needs to be achieved through the journey of aid, but most importantly, domestic finances. Through that. Each country's yeah. tax, yeah. you know? Yeah. And now, mm. before that, there was something called the International Health Partnership. Mm. It used to be countries that receive money from rich countries, mm -hmm. sit with those that give them the money, mm. and discuss how much more money to get. Mm. That was killed mm. in 2015. Mm. And in its place was replaced by this all-inclusive UHC 2030, yeah. which is now bringing in civil society, yeah. bringing in private sector, yeah. the donors, and the, the government, yeah. putting them together. Yeah. World Bank and WHO said we are going to host this platform. In and China? Now, no, the, yeah. in, globally. They're yeah. going to host it right. in Geneva, yeah. and World Bank yeah. and WHO are going to host it. Right. And they say we need a co-chair. Mm. We need co-chairs so that there is global alignment, and these co-chairs host the partnerships mm. and therefore lead the agenda. Mm -hmm. And then someone writes to me an email. No, somebody approaches me mm. in New York. We, mm. were, we had a meeting during the UN General Assembly of 2016. Mm -hmm. They approach me. Mm. And they say, no, 2017, I think. Mm, mm. They say, we, we are looking for a co-chair. Mm. And we have looked at your work and the work of Amref, and mm. we think you should apply. Mm. I say, okay, fine. I'll mm. apply, send you a CV. Mm. And by the end of 2017, mm. because of now my work and all the things I was doing, mm. I was appointed co-chair mm. of UHC 2030. Mm. That's how it happened. Big, big, big deal. Big deal. Big deal. I fly to Japan. Mm. It was being, the appointment was being banned. Mm. At that point, Japan was driving mm. the agenda mm. globally. Mm. And I go to Japan mm. and the Prime Minister Abe is mm. there mm. and they appoint me co-chair mm. plus mm. a Japanese guy called mm. Takao Toda. Mm. So the mm. two of us now co-chairs. Mm. And that now opens up new frontiers for uh, frontiers for AMREF because mm. now we're on a global stage. Mm. Now my voice is being heard. We are talking about UHC. Mm. We are visiting countries. We are inside the UN. Mm. We are driving the agenda. Mm. And because I'm coming back from mm. Odaya, Nyeri, mm. I understand communities. Completely. So I bring my community voice to this global agenda. Because of your story of birth. Exactly, because of my story of birth. Yeah. That when I was born, my mother could not pay uh, the 30 shillings needed mm. to be released from hospital, mm. and she could not, she did not have clothes to dress me. Mm. And somebody has to actually bring her some clothes to get me out of the hospital. Mm. So I understand that. Mm. I understand that people sell their cows mm. to pay mm. healthcare. Mm. So I bring this local voice mm. to the global stage. Mm. I will start off with a, um, a very personal story. In, uh, <clears throat> my father passed away in November 2016, and uh, he passed away at 84, and when he passed away at that point, he could not afford, you know, he could not get health insurance despite the fact that we could pay for it. And the reason was one, he, you know, he was above age and the National Health Insurance Fund was not adequate for him. So I remember in his last admission before he passed on, uh, we admitted him in a private hospital, and um, a few days later, I got a call from the nurse saying my father has refused to eat, and he hadn't eaten for two days. And when I went to talk to him, the reason he gave me for not eating is because he had been admitted severally, and he started to feel that the amount of money I was spending on his admission was too much, and he started to feel that actually he's taking money from his grandchildren, who are my children, and therefore he thought that if he stops eating, he'll reduce the bill. This is the reality that we face out there. So for me, uh, to have been appointed co-chair later in 2017, it was a personal journey, not just something that I had to do, but something I live every day. And therefore, UHC 2030, mm. because of its authenticity, mm. grows in stature. Is that what advocacy is? 
that's advocacy. Mm. Advocacy is storytelling. Mm. Advocacy is authentic storytelling. Mm. It's not just authentic storytelling. Mm. Because advocacy must be driven, the wind that drives the sail of advocacy mm. is voices mm. of the people with the lived experiences. Mm. It cannot be mm. messages created in a boardroom no. from research. No. No. It has it's best driven mm. by the people with lived experiences. Authenticity. Exactly. Mm. If you want advocacy for HIV, mm. talk to people who live with HIV, mm. who mm. take the medicines every day, mm. three times a day, mm. who have to hide them mm. from their spouses or from their friends okay, because givers. they don't want to be known, yeah. who have to actually mm. deal mm. with all the challenges mm. of mm. taking that medicine. Mm. And therefore who say, mm. if you find us a pill we take once a day, mm. it makes our life easier. Mm. Okay, mm. So mm. those are the people mm. with the voices mm. and that's really mm. what drives mm. advocacy. Mm. So mm. this is what happened. Mm. And this is how I found myself mm. on the global UHC 2030 mm. stage. Mm. Yeah. Mm. And, and, and what does that do for Kenya? So, of course, now driving this agenda, mm. um, I actually feel like Kenya at the same time was now also thinking about what to do. Mm. And Kenya was a strong player in the UHC platform as well. Mm -hmm. And that's how the president finally decides to announce that mm. Kenya is going to achieve UHC. Mm -hmm. And I'm the center of this. Mm. So I start now to support the Kenyan government mm. to achieve UHC. Mm -hmm. So I find resources from one of our partners mm. and we establish a uh, as a kind of a stream mm. to assist the government. Mm. We locate people mm. within the government who mm. can assist them. Mm. We host meetings. Mm. We start to support the mm. research to determine how this should be done. Mm. Mm. And we support through the whole Afia Kwa Water. Mm. Actually, we came up mm. with a campaign for Afia Kwa Water. Beautiful. The branding, mm. the launch. Mm. We support the launch mm. in Kisumu. Mm. Um, but I was sad that some of the advice that we give the government mm. was not taken at that mm. point because mm. my view was mm. from wearing this pro poor hat mm. my view was that uhc is going to be a, unachievable mm. if you do not have a starting point mm -hmm. mm. because it's a, such a big goal mm. and the starting point is to say mm. it is those who have the least mm. who deserve the most. The most yeah. So you have to find the ones who can't afford mm. and cover and provide through taxes, mm. cover for all of them. Mm. Give everyone who MHIF mm. who is poor. Mm. Start there. And that's the spirit of the SDGs. That's the spirit Leave of the SDGs. No one Leave behind no one behind. Especially but the there ones are people who... in government who believed, no, it is everybody mm. equal. Mm. So I say, why do you want to provide me an NHIF card? I can mm. pay for one. Mm. Yeah, why do you want to provide my mother mm. a mm. cover if I can pay mm. for her? Mm. Why don't you start identifying those who are poor? Mm. Then the government says we are going to use taxes to pay for everyone below this threshold mm. and then a child card.